So it is the age old internet argument. Who would win, AMD or Intel? And for a long time, Intel has been the winner here, thanks to the fact that unfortunately, AMD's effects lineup has been aging quite a lot and just can't keep up with some of even the cheaper offerings out of Intel in recent years. However, thanks to the big success of Ryzen and subsequently Threadripper, how does Intel's argument stand up today against what AMD is putting up? Hey, what's up guys? CP Modi here, back with another video, and today we're here with the epic battle of AMD versus Intel top-end CPUs to see which one will come out on top. Which one should you buy for gaming? Which one should you buy for productivity? Today, we're going to go ahead and help you answer that. We're going to be taking the highest-end consumer AMD chip and put it head-to-head -head with the highest-end Intel chip to see, again, which one will be the best. We're going to run through and through a bunch of different games, a bunch of different synthetic benchmarks, and they're going to fight to the death to see which one will win, or at least maybe not to the death because I need to give them back to the actual person who owns them, but uh, my point being, we're going to see which one will come out on top. But today, we're really here to see the raw performance in games and also to compute tasks. There's a lot of reasons to go with AMD and also to a lot of reasons to go with Intel when it comes to proprietary technology or other technologies you may want to take advantage of that either one doesn't support, such as Thunderbolt, for example, would be a good reason if you've invested in a bunch of Thunderbolt peripherals and you want to keep using them, chances are you're probably going to go with Intel because they support Thunderbolt because, well, Thunderbolt is Intel's technology. So yes, there are some reasons in terms of features that you should go with one or the other, but today we're going to be taking a look at it strictly from a performance standpoint. If you don't mind going Intel or AMD, which one should you go for in terms of, well, which chip is better here in September of 2018? And I guess also too, it's an extension to that, we're not going to be comparing things like motherboard specifications or SSD support or RAM support. Again, it's really just coming back to the performance that these guys can also do offer. Oh, and also too, finally, these systems will not be overclocked in today's test, mainly because, well, overclocking can skew the results in one chip's favor. For example, if we get an Intel chip that's slightly better overclocking than our AMD chip, they may skew things in a different direction. Don't get me wrong, either chip can be overclocked, and if you're buying either one of these chips, overclocking would be a great deal to get some little extra performance out of these guys, but I did want to go ahead and run tests that everybody could run at home because every single CPU from Intel, whether it be from AMD, heck, even GPUs like NVIDIA and AMD chips all overclock differently. Two people may have, for example, an 8700K, but they may overclock completely different. Back when I used to do a whole bunch of overclocking back in the third generation of Intel CPUs, uh, I went ahead and ran a 3570K on my system, which was able to get well into the 4.5, sort of 4.7 gigahertz range, whereas my friend, who also do had the exact same 3570K bought exactly on the same day, couldn't get past like 4 gigahertz without complete blue screening, whereas mine was up in the high 4 gigahertz. So it is really just a luck of a draw. Which one's going to perform better will come down to what you will get at the end of the day. So today's tests are not overclocked. And if you want to be doing overclocking, which again, you should really be doing with these kind of chips, uh, just add them as a nice little bump on top of what we're getting here. But these are tests that anyone can repeat at home so you can do it and see where you do stack up. So let's go ahead and meet our systems. Over on Team AMD, we've got our ourselves the Ryzen 7 2700X 8 core 16 thread monster of a CPU with a very nice clock speed coming in here again at stock speeds though with the stock inbox cooler. I paired this guy up with the Gigabyte Aurorus X470 Gaming 5 Wi-Fi beast of a motherboard with RGB everywhere which uh, is not really too much of my favorite but we'll definitely be checking this motherboard out in more detail so do stay tuned for that guy. We also do paired it up with 16 gigabytes of crucial DDR4 RAM as I found 16 gigs is a great kind of round that everyone's going to be using and a Zotec 1080 Ti which lives up over my shoulder. I threw in Windows 10 with the latest updates as of September 2018 and that about rounds out our system there. Over on the Intel side, I went ahead and grabbed the Beast 8700K 6 core 12 thread hexacore CPU. Yeah, we got one of those too. And then also too to keep this guy cool, I grabbed an Arctic Esports CPU cooler to keep things nice and cool. In fact, this guy's so powerful that I'm able to cool a 6950X with it and it is absolutely fine. So uh, definitely, if you want to check that out, I'll leave it linked down below. I grabbed a very similar Z370 Gaming 5 motherboard and threw in the same RAM configuration, 16 gigabytes of crucial RAM, 1080 Ti, and also do Windows 10 again with the latest September updates as of 2018. Now, with that being said, 
but that's about it for the specifications. Let's go ahead and start to get into some performance. And jumping first off into some gaming test, boom. Oh, okay. So even though our AMD chip was actually about 100, maybe even more cheaper depending on when and where you do buy it, it unfortunately doesn't exactly beat out really at all in terms of the gaming numbers. Heck, even in some games we were able to see a big enough difference that you could noticeably feel it when playing the game. It was really interesting to see just how big of a gap we were getting between AMD and also to Intel. Now, AMD has like a gaming mode thing that we did have enabled, so everything in AMD's favor was running and it unfortunately just couldn't beat out over on the Intel offering. Thanks to the fact that Intel, generally speaking, has a better IPC than what AMD does offer. AMD does have more cores, however as we do know a lot of games these days whilst they are taking advantage of more and more cores, still don't take advantage of all 8 cores and 16 threads. A lot of them just kind of idling around and not exactly doing that much, so it was a bit of a downside there. However, we do need to keep in mind we're saving around a hundred plus dollars here in Australia going with the AMD, so it's still an epic deal for what we're saving here, because over on the Intel side not only do you have to buy the chip, but they don't even come with a CPU cooler, so you have to go and buy an aftermarket one. Again, our Arctic one is pretty cost efficient and is not that bad, but once you sort of throw in the price difference between the actual two different chips plus a CPU cooler, yeah, we do run into some bit of a differences here. However, where things really started to turn around was over in the content creation side, and that makes our $100 plus savings look like an absolutely epic deal. For example, in our Premiere Pro test, it only took a few minutes to render the uh, each video on both AMD and also to Intel. However, that saving doesn't seem like a much, but once we start blowing that up into big numbers, these things get really, really awesome. For example, when I render one of these videos that's around 10 to 15 minutes, YouTube videos, they can take anywhere from around an hour to an hour and a half, and I'm able to save well into the 10-15 minutes right here, which was really awesome to see. If I was to go ahead and times that up by the amount of videos I make, I can be saving hours and hours just by switching over to the AMD side. So for example, on that render test, wasn't the biggest difference, but if we then go ahead and put that into real world tests where you may be rendering for hours on end, definitely those hours do add up. Other productivity sort of sides is actually not that bad. Sure, Cinebench did lose out in terms of the single thread for the AMD one because obviously, as we did mention, IPC on the Intel side is slightly better. So Cinebench did go ahead and win out on the Intel side, but all in all, the rest was basically dominated by AMD, which was really awesome to see. Again, coming into lower price tag, really, really awesome value. So I guess conclusion and TLDR time now that we've seen our numbers. The battle between AMD and Intel is definitely live and is really awesome to see lately with the massive hits that are coming out from each company. There's a lot more cores, a lot more speed, the CPU market is definitely getting absolutely revved up. What is best for you will definitely come down to what you plan to do. Taking a look at our numbers, if you're mainly going to be going ahead and playing games and you have very little aspirations to spend like 70 hours rendering, I don't know, a chair for example in 3D space, then obviously an Intel chip is going to be better for you. With its better IPC, it's going to be better in gaming, and don't get me wrong, if you want to do some streaming or cut together a short little video of all your like 360 no scopes, that would be totally fine as it's still a 6 core 12 thread beast of a CPU, so it's absolutely perfect for that. Whereas if you do have aspirations to go ahead and spend 70 hours rendering a chair in 3D space, then obviously the AMD offering is going to be better for you with its few extra cores, obviously better value right there and will cut down a whole bunch of time. A great example is what I do right here on YouTube. Our general render for one of these videos anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour and a half depending on how long the video is. And for example, in the past four videos that I did, I did a quick comparison, I saved on average around 15 minutes per render over the last four videos, or last week worth of video. Times out 15 by 4, and I've saved about an hour. So, in the time it takes Intel chips to render three of my videos, I can actually render four over on the AMD side, which is really, really cool. Now, yes, there's overhead and real world things that do work into it, so that math isn't 100% perfect, but on paper at least, this is a really big saving, which in the real world, again, blows out to be really, really noticeable. So, for content creators and people who want to do 3D kind of stuff and a lot more CPU intensive stuff, definitely AMD all the way is a really good option. But that's sort of it. Do let me know down in that comment section which side are you on? Are you on the AMD side or are you on the Team Intel side? Let me know down in that comment section. And if you're planning on building a new build, let me know what you would build down there as well. If you want to pick up any of these CPUs, motherboards, RAM, video cards, anything we talked about here today, I'll leave them linked down in that description box. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.
We'll be right back.